Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. Christian, holier than thou, entitled mom, tries to manipulate me. I gave her a taste of her own medicine. After that, I want the original price worth of value. And after that, entitled mom gets mad at me, a 16-year-old cashier, because I didn't recognize her son. Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen gets a taste of her own medicine. How dare you! So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. Christian, holier than thou, entitled mom, tries to manipulate me. I gave her a taste of her own medicine. This story happened earlier this week. To preface this, ever since the lockdown started, my church has been having meetings online via live stream. This has extended to small groups, which are now done through Zoom meetings. This particular week was much like the others in terms of small groups, Bible talk, cracking jokes, and discussing pop culture. However, joining us this week was my friend's aunt from out of town, the entitled mom of the story, who from what I heard had a tendency to have a holier-than-thou demeanor. At one point of the chat, we got to the topic of hobbies. I took the moment to discuss my hobby of gaming my big mistake of the story. I talked about my gaming collection of different gaming consoles, Super Nintendo, N64, GameCube, PlayStations 1, 2, 3, Wii, Switch, Game Boy Color, and games that I've collected over the years, which my friends found to be fascinating. So on to the story. Cast, we've got me, we've got Entitled Mom, my friend's aunt, and we've got my friend. So about 40 minutes after small group, I get a phone call from my friend's phone number. I picked it up only to be greeted by his aunt, entitled mom. Hello, OP. Me, entitled mom. What a surprise. Well, I'm calling you from friend's phone because I wanted to talk to you about something. Me, okay, what do you want to talk about? During small group, you mentioned that you had a collection of video games and video game systems. Me, yeah, what about them? Well, you see, it's just that strong Christian men like you shouldn't be wasting time playing video games. You should be dedicating your time towards getting married, starting a family, and teaching them the ways of God and the Bible. Me, dumbfounded. Wait, what? Entitled Mom. Remember, the Bible tells men to put away childish things, and video games are definitely under that category. Me, disgusted. So what are you suggesting I do with my collection then? Entitled Mom. You should donate it to a child in need. Better yet, my son loves video games and his birthday is coming up, so you should give it to him. I'm sure he'd be grateful. Me, starting to get real angry. Well, I'm not sure I would feel comfortable doing that. Entitled Mom. I will tell you what. I'm in town till Wednesday. I'll call you back tomorrow. This gives you plenty of time to pray about it. Hopefully God convicts you to man up and put your childish things away. Good night now, hangs up. I sat there for a good 15 minutes with anger stewing in mind over the audacity of this entitled mom. I wanted to call her back and curse her out until a light bulb went off in my head. At the moment, an evil Grinch grin had crept across my face. My mind had just formulated a perfect response to entitled mom's request. The next day, I spent the day waiting for friend's aunt to call me. In the evening, the moment came. I saw my friend's number ringing on my phone and the evil Grinch grin came back to my face. Me. Why hello, Entitled Mom. How are you today? I'm doing well. Have you thought about our conversation from yesterday? Me. Why yes, I have. Entitled Mom. What did you decide? Me. In my best, jolly, holier-than-thou, Joel Osteen voice. Well, I prayed long and hard about what you said and I spent some time reading the Bible. Entitled Mom. And? Me. Well, growing boys are very pivotal to the future of the kingdom of God, and building a relationship with Jesus is very important to their upbringing. In all honesty, video games are just going to be a distraction to him, and time spent playing them is better dedicated to learning about the Bible. But that's... Remember, Entitled Mom, the book of Proverbs tells us to start children off on the way they should go, and Ephesians tells us to bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So, unfortunately, I will have to pass on gifting your son my gaming collection. However, 
I will gladly send you a children's study Bible and a DVD collection of VeggieTales to Friend, and he can send them to you, entitled Mom. But wait, it's not going to be an issue. Me, cutting her off, but still in my jolly, holier-than-thou voice. I'm sorry, entitled Mom, but I have an important dinner arrangement to go to. Goodbye now. Hangs up. I turned off my phone after that to make sure that the entitled mom couldn't call me back. Later on that night, friend sent me a message on Facebook apologizing for his aunt's behavior. Apparently, she took his phone behind his back to make both calls and he got really upset when he found out about what entitled mom was asking of me. But at the end of the day, I still have my collection and my hobby. Mario Kart anyone? Speaking of video games, what systems do you like to play? Or do you stick to PC? Please let us know your favorite console of all time. My son just loves the Nintendo Switch. And I love stealing them from people. I want the original price worth of value. The other day, I had a couple of middle-aged women that came in for a return, claiming their phone screen protector was defective and that they had purchased it earlier that day. They installed it themselves, but there's a strange adhesive that's dried and fixed to the plastic. Definitely not their fault. It's a cheaper protector marked down from $40 to $10 on clearance. Not a big deal. It's an easy replacement. Sure, I say. It's defective. We'll return or exchange it for you. Thank you, woman A replies. Are we able to swap it for one of the $40 ones? We can get you one of those. So I select the appropriate glass protector and ring it at the till. $30 plus taxes is the difference. No, that's wrong, she decrees. That's not what I'm paying, is it? That's correct. $40 minus $10 equals $30. That's how much you owe. Woman A. But the one I purchased is regularly priced at $40. You should give me that value for the protector back. Me. Did you pay $40 for the screen protector? Well, no. But that one, she points to the defective plastic discarded to the side of the till, isn't any good. And I want the value of it back. You're getting the value of it back. We can swap it for the same one if you'd like, and we can verify that it's in working condition, hoping to provide a solution. But it's met with an indignant, no, there's no way to check if the plastic is damaged before you unpeel it. Otherwise, I would have seen it beforehand. Let's check. And so I open the case and voila, the plastic is perfectly intact. Okay, so you're going to install it for me on my phone? Sure, it's a $15 charge for us to install it. We're happy to do it for you, but it's zero for me because I'm such a great customer. She was in fact not a great customer. Nope, I can swap the protector or I can refund you the money. I want to speak to your manager. Sure, I'm the senior employee in our electronics department. What do you want to speak about? The management for this department won't be in until tomorrow. The management on duty are from different areas and they will tell you the same thing. I can offer you a refund for your screen case or exchange of the value you paid. But I'm not giving you $55 worth of product for free when you've only spent $10 here. Is there a store manager I can talk to? Let me call over Miss Manager. She's management. After a minute, Miss Manager comes over to speak with the customer. Woman A. Hi, you're the manager. This man has been presenting himself as management and he is refusing to help me. I wanted to exchange this phone screen and he's not giving me the value of it back. Miss Manager. Well... He knows more about this than I do. What did you say? I repeat the same thing I've been saying for the last five minutes. We can refund you your money or you can put the $10 towards a different screen protector. Miss Manager. That sounds reasonable to me. Which option would you like? Woman A. This is unbelievable. Your other locations don't treat me this poorly. I want the value of my case. It's $40. Me. We're offering you the value back. You paid $10. You get $10. Just because it's on clearance doesn't mean you get the original price back. Woman B. Come on, let's just take our business to the other store. They at least know how customer service works. Woman A agrees and the pair leave without returning their screen protector they had spent 20 minutes arguing about. Me. Okay, have a nice day. Do you think they should have let her do the exchange? A lot of places actually will just to get rid of the problematic customer. But what do you think? Please let us know. Of course they should have. She deserved it. My dad says he'll pick me up at dark. Well, he hasn't picked me up, so it must not be dark. This happened about 10 years ago now, and I have a good chuckle about it every time I pass the place in my car. 
I'm a pretty meek guy, so this is probably the only rebellious thing I did in my entire teenage life. My dad owns a farm, and being his son, this meant that I had a job when I was a kid, whether I liked it or not. Mostly I understood this, but that didn't mean I had to like it. I resented having to spend my entire days of summer vacation, dawn to dusk, in a tractor when it came time to harvest alfalfa, which we did about four times between spring and fall. Basically, imagine a teenager with ADHD forced to sit in one place for 14 hours and you'll understand how it felt. Honestly, if I wasn't a total introvert, I might have snapped sooner. So anyway, it's the second day of harvest. I've spent about 20 hours in total in a haybine by this point over the past few days and I ask my dad which fields to cut next and I ask him when I'll be done, hoping in vain that I can leave and go play video games or whatever. This is where the titular line comes in. I'll pick you up at dark. Little does he know that my little teenage heart is clenching with righteous anger for all this wasted, paid time. So several hours pass and I'm understandably getting pretty irritable. It starts getting dark and guess what? No sign of my dad. At the time, it was becoming a bit of a recurring joke in my family about how my dad was always late, so I knew I was in for the long haul. Then it occurred to me and the malicious compliance begins. My dad said he'd pick me up at dark and he wasn't picking me up. So that must mean that it wasn't dark yet. And what don't you need if it's not dark outside? That's right, headlights. So I continue going back and forth on this wide, empty field, squinting as the light continues to fade after sunset and stubbornly refuse to turn on the headlights. I can easily see the edges of the field, of course, but everything else is blending in pretty well. I start purposely and accidentally leaving some shark fins, which is what we call the mistakes that hay bean operators leave between rows when they don't get any alfalfa. A few small shark fins per field are fine, even expected, but these are on a whole new level. My dad shows up after around 30 minutes of total darkness. I forget our exact conversation, but I do remember the result. After asking me why I didn't turn on the lights and me telling him why, he laughed uproariously, and I still remember it fondly to this day. I never did get any punishment. I'm not even sure he understood the extent of the missed alfalfa. It was dark after all, and it was hard to see in the dim moonlight, but whatever. It was just a few rows. I, however, like to think he was a little proud of me because I was the type of teenager who never got into mischief. I asked him about it recently, and unfortunately, he has no memory of the incident. Oh well. I, however, will probably remember this little bit of malicious compliance fondly for the rest of my life. It might have been pretty insignificant and motivated by laziness, but it was also the first time I really stood up for myself against an authority figure. Have any of you guys ever lived on a farm? And if not, would you like to? Please let us know. I need to have neighbors close by so that I can use them when I need stuff. No, I am not staff and no, you can't crash my dad's wedding. About a year ago, my dad was getting married. As it was his second wedding, he did not want it to be a huge event and neither did his fiance. Thus, they decided to have their wedding with just 17 guests at the bookstore where they met. Aw, it was cute and I wanted to throw up. He asked me and my sisters to guide the other guests to the room where the ceremony would be held since we were there early to set up. The bookstore was something of a maze, as bookstores often are. My dad's wedding was being held on the second floor so my sisters and I were stationed at various places on the first floor leading to the stairs, which were hidden in a little corner in the back. My sisters and I were dressed up, but not wearing name tags or aprons like the people who actually worked at the bookstore. That did not stop a parade of people stopping by and asking where to find certain books. I don't know what it was about my appearance in particular, but most customers came to me instead of my sisters. I get that I was standing in a particular spot, and that I could have looked like I was there to answer questions, but the staff were busy shelving books, dusting, making coffee, and generally being busy, so I would have been a pretty lousy staff member just standing around like that. One customer in particular approached me and asked if I knew where the painting that used to hang in the store was now. I answered that I did not work here and was simply guiding guests to the room where my dad's wedding was to be held. The man looked incredulous and asked me several more questions about the painting including who the artist was, where the medium was, the size of the painting, and what the subject was. After I answered that I did not know any of those things, he was satisfied that I did not in fact work at the bookstore. He then proceeded to say how much he loved weddings, no matter who was getting married. 
He asked where the wedding was being held and if he could go take a peek. I answered that that would be really weird, given that it's a private ceremony, and my dad would probably appreciate it if he didn't. He laughed it off and said, Ah, oh, well, I'll come by and crash the wedding later. I just love weddings so much. I practically begged him to not crash my dad's wedding, even just to watch, because there were so few guests that it would just be painfully awkward to have some random man smiling in the back. After a few moments of us going back and forth and him promising he'd be there whether we liked it or not, he finally agreed to leave the wedding alone. He stayed for a suspiciously long time in the bookstore, watching all the guests come in. He smiled ridiculously as my now stepmother walked in with her dress and headed upstairs, provoking her to ask me and my sisters, who is that creepy smiling guy standing around watching the entourage? We responded, he's just some guy who really likes weddings and asked if he could crash yours. To our great relief, he did not show up at the ceremony, but the whole time I was worried about it. Sorry for being distracted during your wedding, Dad. Have you ever been to a wedding? And if so, did you like it? Please let us know. Oh, I just love crashing weddings, especially when the food is good. Must attend interview in person. I was working for a university in the UK as an admissions officer when I decided to apply for the role of senior admissions officer in the same office. I submitted my application and didn't hear anything for a while. A week or so later, I was abroad for a week to visit my family when I received an email to confirm that I got invited for an interview the next day at 9am. I replied and asked if we could postpone the interview until Monday because I'd be back by then, but they refused. The lady who refused was my current manager, and she knew I was abroad, so I didn't think this was very fair. I asked if we could do the interview over Skype instead, but she also refused this. The interview time was set, and if I was interested, I would be there. Otherwise, it's my loss. I was ticked off, as I couldn't believe how inflexible they were. I started rereading the email again and decided to go through the attachments to see what I had to prepare for the interview. I noticed they added a travel expense form which stated that if you travel from 5 miles or further, you could claim your expenses. Being abroad in Europe is definitely over 5 miles, so I decided to drive to the airport, booked the last flight which was £350 for a one-way flight, got a cab from the airport and stayed in a hotel near the university as my house would have been at the other side of London. I made it to the interview in time and they were shocked to see me as they obviously didn't expect me. The interview went well, but I did not get the job. When I handed in my expense claim form, I was advised that it only applied to UK travel and they refused to pay. I asked them why they sent me the claim form when they knew I was traveling in from abroad and said that nowhere on the form did it state it was for the UK travel only. They said it was their policy, but I was not allowed to view said policy. I was due a lot of money, so I decided to file a freedom of information request for them to provide the policy. This appeared to be a historical policy, and as they could not send me the evidence, they decided to pay my travel expenses, which came to a total of over £550. The policy has been updated since. I don't work here, lady. I used to live here. Two weeks ago, I was helping my dad install several new sets of doors to our old house. We moved into our new house just over two months ago, and we've been renovating our old house to rent out, rather than try to sell it due to current circumstances. We've basically completely redone the house aesthetically with new paint, new flooring, even some upgrades to make it more attractive and warrant a better price for it. We made the decision to rent our house through a property management company. The company basically acts as a middleman that handles any issues with the tenants so my parents who own the house aren't acting as direct landlords. And since we were just about done cleaning up the house to make it attractive to potential tenants and it had passed inspection, our last minute door change was approved by the agency. One of the employees from the company was offering tours to potential tenants they'd organized by appointment. It was around noon that the employee had just done the last of our rounds with potential tenants for the day and she offered me a small stack of her personal cards so anyone who came through interested in our house could call her to arrange a tour. I took the stack of cards and put it in my pocket, promising I'd hand the cards to any potential tenants who expressed interest. About an hour or so passed and I'd taken a break to have some lunch. I was sitting on the porch and looking out at the for rent sign when a lady came trotting down the sidewalk. She looked at the sign and then looked up at me, the stocky Hispanic kid in jeans, a t-shirt and some vans, and marched her way up the walkway to the house. Lady, 
Excuse me, are you doing tours of this rental? I'd like to see the inside. I stood up, brushing off one hand to dig through my jeans pocket and pull out the company lady's cards to peel one off for her. Me. The company actually just finished tours for the day, but they gave me these cards. Here's the lady managing the property. You can give her a call and set up a tour of the property. Lady. Can't you give me a tour? Me. I mean, I don't work for the company, so I can't give you any official tour. Better for you to call the company and set up an appointment. They're the professionals. Lady. You don't work for the company? Then what are you doing here? Me. Installing some new doors. The company told us it was okay. So we just... So you do work for the company? She said this as if she had just riddled out some great mystery. Me. Look, lady. I don't work for the company. My dad's the owner of this property, and he arranged with the company to handle the renting of this house. I'm helping him install new doors so the house that I grew up in can be more attractive to potential tenants. Now, if you want a tour, you can call the lady handling the renting of this house. Here's her card. Have a nice day. The lady just looked at the card, looked at me, and something must have clicked in her head because she just took the card and walked off. The rest of the afternoon went pretty smooth. I handed out about a dozen cards to other people who were interested in renting and the lady handling our house called my dad to thank me once we got home. Speaking of house upgrades, what was the last upgrade you did to your house? We'd love to hear from you. We just got a beautiful piece for the living room that says live, laugh, love. One of my favorite sayings. Karen calls cops on Amazon driver. This just happened yesterday and I am still trying to gather my thoughts. I was driving a route that was given to me when I came into a neighborhood where there were some cones on the road close to the curb to let other drivers know that kids were playing outside. These cones were the small regular orange ones with a light at the top of it to make them more noticeable. The kids were playing in the yard and it was very big to run around in without running into the streets. They were nowhere close to the road at all. Despite what people have said about Amazon drivers, we usually do follow the rules since we have people at the warehouse, including Amazon, watching us. I was driving a little below the speed limit since I saw the cones on the road and wanted to be respectful. Apparently, this wasn't slow enough for the mother who was outside watching the kids. She decided to start walking to my van and for her safety, I started slowing down so I didn't hurt her since she was getting closer to my van. As she is walking, she is yelling at me entitled mom slow down there are kids playing outside and your reckless driving could hurt someone me no i was driving the speed limit plus your kids are nowhere near the road i can see your cones and know that the kids are playing i don't care if they are in the road or not you need to be more considerate of other people than yourself this carried on for a few more minutes me telling to her and her yelling to me I didn't want to deal with her anymore, so I started driving off. She decided to get in front of my van in the middle of the road to stop me from driving. I yelled at her to move, and she put her hands on her hips to say, I'm not going anywhere. I didn't want to deal with this crazy lady anymore and needed to deliver more packages, so I turned my van to the left, and then she moved to the left. I turned my van to the right, and again, she turned to the right. At this point, I am a little past her driveway, so I started backing up and she started yelling at me more. I know your job is hard, but you need to listen to me. Me, please just go away. You need to stop driving so fast. At this point, the father comes outside and tells the mother to calm down and stop yelling. As I am backing up, I barely touch one of the cones on the ground. The father starts yelling about how I destroyed his cones and how expensive they are, and tells me how I owe them money for the cone. I park my van, and the mother is extremely close to my van now. I open my door to look at the damage, and the mother jumps in front of my door, and then starts crying that I hit her with my van. You hit me with your van. I can't believe you hit me. Entitled father. I can't believe you just hit my wife. I'm calling the cops on you. You're not going anywhere. I get back in my van and call my dispatcher to let them know what was going on so I didn't get into trouble for being late to my next drop. Our deliveries are time-based and we can get into trouble if we sit too long. 
The police arrive and they come up to me and ask about what happened. The father and mother jumps in first, entitled Mom. This man was speeding down the road at a high rate, and I tried yelling at him to slow down. He almost hit one of my kids. Then he got mad at me telling him to slow down and reversed his van and destroyed our cones. Then he slammed his door into me, hurting me in the process. Entitled Father I paid a lot of money for those cones, and this guy destroys them all because he got mad at my wife. The cones are to protect the kids from drivers like him. He needs to pay for my cones. Me. You both are lying. I was driving a very slow speed when the mother decided that I was going too fast and stopped me in the middle of the road. Then when I tried to leave, I accidentally touched one of the cones, not even damaged, and the father started yelling at me and called you guys. As for hitting her, she jumped in front of my door as I opened it, I assume to falsify her getting hit. The officers looked at the cones and see that there is no damage to it, and then went to the mother and told her, Police officer, You know it's illegal in the state of Texas to stop a moving vehicle in the middle of the road. You are not allowed to block any kind of traffic. If anyone has to pay anything, it will be you paying a ticket. I asked the police if I may go, and he said yes. I really don't like losing time and didn't want to be there longer than I needed to. I don't know what ended up happening to the mother or father, but I wish I could have remembered their address, just so I could put a little piece of paper on their door that reads, Ha ha. Entitled parent has no courtesy. So the entitled parent of my story is the worst kind of them all. It's the kind you can't get away from because it's my own mother. Today we went over to my grand's apartment for lunch. A thing to note is that in my country, it's common to have maids. But my grandparents, and my family until recently, don't have any. This is important for later into the story. My grandmother is very active in the church, so there was an event today and no one else wanted to go, so I went instead. Before heading to the event, I ordered a pizza for the family because no one wanted to cook. The event lasted for about one and a half hours, mostly just waiting around for the priest to show up and chatting with my grandmother's friends. Once it finished, we packed up and headed back to her place. Since we took so long, everyone else ate already and it was just me and her left eating at the table. After we finished, she was the only one cleaning. I tried to help, but she insisted I didn't. Meanwhile, my mom was sitting at the sofa, not moving. Mind you, they left a bit of a mess as well. Now, this is where the no maids comes into play. For a good nine months, we only had a cleaning lady come on weekends. At first, I was the one cleaning the house and the dishes and we would have the laundry done on the weekends. I soon got tired of this because my mom was a mess. It would come to a point where she would leave plates, cups, and utensils in the sink, bedside table, dining table, anywhere she could put them really, all unwashed for days, sometimes weeks. Her laundered clothes would be stacked on chairs and the side of her bed. She would never sweep her room or wipe any of the surfaces. She had dogs that just left and would let their poop accumulate in the backyard. Mind you, she would never walk the dogs at all, and one of them is a lab that was wildly untrained and out of control. She even bit my dog, but that's a story for another time. And these dogs managed to go from fat and fluffy to skinny little things because she forgot to feed them. Basically, she was operating as if we still had people to pick up after her. Whenever I would lecture her about it, she would say, Those aren't mine. I didn't use those. Or when she couldn't use that excuse, Don't worry, I'll get to it. We got into a huge argument because she didn't want to even look for new maids and stated, Well, we can just clean the house ourselves. The point was, she couldn't even clean after herself. I realized that during the time we didn't have maids, she would spend more and more time at my grandmother's house. All those times my mother didn't come home while we were maidless, this is what she was doing to her. She was leaving her 65-year-old mom to clean by herself while she relaxed on the sofa watching TV. She basically had a free maid to cook and clean after her. This was probably going on for the longest time and I couldn't fathom how someone could just leave their mother to do all the work. It was one thing to be lazy in your own home, 
but in someone else's? My grandmother afterwards started folding clothes, so I started helping her out. Meanwhile, my mom is still relaxing on the couch. When it got really late, like 12, my sister wanted to leave as she was the one driving. My mom took forever to get up. My sister got so upset she left. So what does my mom do? She then asks my gran for a glass of water when she was literally five steps away from the kitchen. After a while, I told my mom to hurry up because sister was waiting for her and it looked to me like she was taking her sweet time. She then snapped with a, yeah, wait, my foot is wet. When she was done, she was still looking around, not caring about how long she was taking. When we finally left the condo 15 minutes later, we went down and had to walk and look for my sister a bit because she moved the car. When we got in, my mom threw my sister's bag out of her way so she could sit. My sister's laptop was in the backpack, and of course, my sister is mad and says, what the heck? Don't throw my things. My laptop is in there. Hand me my laptop now. Mom is huffing and shoves the bag to my sister. My sis hadn't put the car on neutral, so I tell her to give it to me so I can check it while she drives. After I make sure it's okay, my mom asks for the laptop and she shoves it back into my sister's bag. She's still upset for no reason. I can tell because of the way the laptop thuds when it's tossed into the bag and I can hear her zip the bag roughly. She doesn't even apologize and huffs and puffs in the back seat. I proceed to drown her out with rap music. This is the other entitled parent that I think receives little attention and exposure. The kind that believes they don't need to have basic courtesy because we're family. And when you live with someone, it's obvious you'll see them at their worst. Her words. It's the kind that chirps away at you every day with the small things they do because they can't empathize with anyone but themselves. Hey Karen, can you read us our new review we just got on iTunes? Bubba says, very epic. The easiest way to browse Reddit twice at the same time. I rate Epic Gamer out of Karen. Nice, thanks Bubba. We hope you continue to enjoy the Mr. Reddit podcast available on Spotify and iTunes. And join as a channel member today. Become a patron or leave us a review on iTunes and we'll give you a special shout out in our next video. And if you'd like us to make a special video for you or a loved one, come visit us on Fiverr. Link pinned in the comments below.